Mr. Bois Tavares at Winnipeg, Pavelski Hoffman at Montreal to the point in the first intermission with Elliot Freeman in for Kelly Rudy this week and Jennifer Bottrell and Kevin BX. And Kevin, let's start with the hit Marner took. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, let's take a look at it. He's obviously cut up. I think it's incidental, the contact. Marner is protecting the puck. DeMello's going to approach him. It's a cutback. It's not really a lot of force by DeMello. And obviously, Marner probably hits his head into the glass a little bit. Visor cuts him. Yeah, that actually angle looks a little bit worse, but... At first glance from behind, which is the view that the referee has, it didn't look like there was a lot of force. So looking back now, maybe it could have been a penalty call. He's obviously a little bit banged up, but he'll push through, Elliot. Well, pushing through, and we've seen, a, we've seen <laughs> players play Matthews really tight, right? An example of that, he drew one penalty here in the first period tonight. Morrissey took the call. I mean, last season, Matthews drew 14 penalties for the entire regular season. He's has seven that have been called against him already this year. So for him, trying to push through that, be creative to find those openings, but he is taking a lot of physicality. I also thought the other night when they missed the one on Ben that Toronto got rewarded after because they had mm -hmm. eight power plays after that one happened. You know, Montreal, I didn't think I would say this, but I'm really enjoying watching them this year. You can tell they have no pressure on them, and they feel very, very confident. Arbor Jackai, great block, and sets up the goal with a beautiful pass. Uh, Michelle Terrian said a young team will play with more fire and more confidence in their own building. Yeah, well, we're seeing it with Montreal. and It's a young team, and when you're at home, it's different because everybody's cheering for you. If you're an offensive guy, you get the puck, and there's an excitement. And on the road, it's not that way. You have people cheering against you. It seems like the other team's more physical, and they're being rewarded. So certainly there is a confidence from playing at home. I felt like in my career I fought a lot more on the road than at home. For that reason, I felt like our skill guys were more in a groove and more comfortable at home and sometimes a little bit rattled on the road. Okay. <laughs> there's no, no pressure. I meant you just called your teammates I know. I just, as I was saying, I was like, oh, I'm kind of burying them a little bit. <laughs> but I feel like Montreal, I mean, they, they don't have anything to lose right now in terms of playing without that pressure or expectation, right? Let's parse and analyze some choices of words by coaches, starting with Sheldon Keefe. For everything our team has been through together, that's unacceptable. we got to be way more responsible. Our best people have not found the rhythm, so maybe really look at it. The difference between us and Arizona is that we have elite players. And our elite players didn't play like elite players today. Didn't couldn't make a difference. I used some of the wrong words to to try to you know describe what I was trying to describe, which is that in the difference in the game, I find is just we weren't able to produce. By no means was I meaning anything anything beyond that, which is what I wanted them to be to be sure of. Elliot. You know, my rule when judging something is, how would I feel if someone said that about me? And maybe it's because I'm used to Kevin telling me every week how terrible <laughs> I am or I spend too much time on social media and I'm desensitized to everything. But I saw nothing there that Sheldon Keefe needed to walk back or apologize or, or clarify for. I do see a coach who sees, is under pressure, who feels that after losses, if we play like this, we're going to be in big trouble. But I don't think he had to apologize or walk back or clarify anything. So, yes, there's a lot at stake, but at some point there needs to be a level of composure. And if you're a player, if you're one of their top players that wants to produce offensively, to get called out at this point in the season, there has to be an inner confidence and trust in the process. And I think some of these comments, and then him backtracking on those comments, is recognizing what do your players need uh, at this point to be successful. So there's going to be a time where there needs to be intensity and demanding more from your players. But I also feel like you need to have this inner confidence and trust in your team. Yes, high expectations, but just I think you need to be a little more mm -hmm. composed in some of these situations. There's only so much you can do as a coach, and, and words is one of them. You can use your words to motivate, to criticize. And I think in this case, and, and you kind of said something different before the show, Elliot, but I kind of agree with what you're saying is there, there's not a whole lot there. Whether he, like we're, we're focusing on the elite players' comments or not, like maybe he could have used different words there, but certainly this, this criticism, if you even want to call it criticism, can be handled by Matthews and Marner. I think they would be offended to think that we think they're offended by those comments. That's the way I feel. I don't think Matthews or Marner for a second are sitting there thinking, well, Sheldon Keith just really ruined my confidence with those comments. I think you're, as a coach, you're entitled to say that. And to be honest, like, I don't think there was a whole lot there either. But if, if you combine that with the reaction of Dubas uh, when we were, they were going for the goal challenge as well, I mean, do you not think there was a little element of perhaps overreacting? Yes, there's a lot at stake for this organization. Their positions, of course. But at some point, you need to be calm in the process. I mean, this team, 
There's a difference between you want to win and you have to win. And right now, these are examples of a coach and the management who feel like they have to win. And it's not going to be a perfect season. There's going to be moments. How are you going to handle it to convey and to have a contagious confidence for your organization? I think in that particular case, it was because it was the second game in a row a review was going against him. And I had a bunch of people who said to me they actually like seeing that from Dubas because Normally, he looks like a bit of an automaton, so they thought it was good to see him look so emotional. Do you so think emotional. Matthews and Mario care what Dubas is doing in the suite, though? No. <laughs> really? I, I don't. Like, I feel like you're so focused when you're a player. And those are these are two elite players in the world. I don't think they care so much about the reactions different. or the words. M Matthews, right? Yeah. I, I, one thing I would say is that I, I think some of those guys handle things very differently. And, and I have said this, and people have said to me, you're criticizing Marner. No, I'm not. I, my point about Marner is I think he does feel it a bit more, particularly because he's from Toronto, and I think they are they do try to be careful to manage the extra pressure he feels. And coaches for every athlete, they're, they're going to be a little different. Same thing happened in Vancouver, but we're not going to get a chance. We will, though. Okay. Bruce Boudreau, I know you're tuned in. Uh, we'll do yours, uh, not in the second intermission, but uh, in the window between the telecasts. As we continue our coverage, a pair of ties so far this evening at Bell Centre and Canada Life Centre on Hockey Night in Canada.